Musk meeting with top leaders and saying the country's development is natural. This after telling David Faber earlier this month that, quote, the Chinese economy and the golden doors of the global economy are conjoined. Yunus Yun is live in Beijing with more. Good day, Yunus. Hi, Tyler. Well, Elon Musk used a similar phrase here in China when he told the foreign minister that China and the U.S., are conjoined. Uh, he was speaking to the foreign minister after arriving here in Beijing. He's expected to meet with the premier and then also to visit his uh, Shanghai factory, which he hasn't seen in over three years. Now, um, upon arriving, Musk, uh, right from the get-go, was speaking very positively about China, in addition to uh, saying that China's development achievements are, quote, natural, as uh, Tyler had said. He also said that he opposes decoupling and breaking chains. Uh, this is a similar line that we hear from Beijing. Um, that's where um, the, the phrase about uh, the U.S. and China being conjoined came in, and also that he's willing to expand here and share China's opportunities. Now, his remarks were met with equal enthusiasm from the Chinese government. Uh, the foreign ministry said that the foreign minister uh, was talking about how Tesla uh, shows that Beijing has a strong commitment to an international uh, business climate. And then he used Tesla as an analogy for U.S.-China relations, uh, saying that the two countries needed to, quote, avoid dangerous driving and step on the gas to promote mutually beneficial cooperation. Now, Musk isn't the only American CEO here in China. Uh, Jamie Dimon uh, is headlining a J.P. Morgan um, conference in Shanghai, where about 2,600 uh, bankers and clients are expected to gather. Uh, Shanghai City has already said that uh, Jamie Dimon has uh, paid a visit and met with the Shanghai uh, Party uh, Secretary or the, the Communist Party chief there, uh, saying that he would be investing more in Shanghai. And then uh, for Shanghai's part, uh, they say that this uh, really shows the confidence that foreign companies have in Shanghai. Guys? Eunice, thank you very much. And it's, of course, not just Musk in China. Jamie Dimon, as uh, Eunice mentioned, making his first appearance in the country in four years, hosting a financial summit in Shanghai. All this coming just a few weeks before President Biden is set to host a first-ever state dinner for India, a move seen as tightening allies in the region around China. So is this a thawing of business relations? Let's talk to Dennis Unkovic, our friend and partner at Meyer Unkovic and Scott, someone with years of experience helping companies do business in China. Dennis, I guess I am a little bit uh, confused. By on the one hand, it seems American business people are trying to be conciliatory towards China, keeping doors open, talking nice. Where on the other hand, it seems that the political stance of the United States, the foreign policy stance of the United States, is to be tough on China. You almost, if you're a policymaker, can't be tough enough on China. Are we being too tough on China, politically, governmentally? That's a great question. My opinion is, no, we are not being too tough on China. Several companies, let's take Elon Musk, for example. Um, he wants to sell, as he's manufacturing in China, his, electron, his, his electric cars. That's great. And he will be able to do that. But he has doubled down on China. But most of the companies in the U.S. that are dependent upon Chinese exports have had a lot of problems over the last several years getting things on a timely basis. That's why you see the offshoring or reshoring going on there. And the CEOs uh, visiting now, Tyler, it's not a surprise. Uh, Xi Jinping had a zero policy COVID policy in effect for three years. It didn't work. And as a result, this is the first open door when they're going back. If I were a CEO, I might want to go back. But would I want to make major promises to invest significantly more? The answer is no. How worried are you about two things? One is the state of the Chinese economy and whether it is as healthy as some of us are led to believe it may be or as healthy as the Chinese uh, government may want us to believe it is. And number two, the possibility that their battle with COVID is far, far, far from over. Two things. You talk about how good the Chinese economy is. The GDP in China is now about 4.1%. As of April two months ago, that is the worst 
in a generation of growth in China. So Xi Jinping, although he has significant power and can lead the CCP, he does not have a strong economy. So it's really imperative on him to try to make nice with American companies. That's why I see you going on.